We can compare college prospects all day long, which players should be chosen first, who's going to have more success in the NFL, but not often can we have such an interesting conversation about players that play the same position and play on the same team. This would have been a huge conversation if Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase would have came out the same year. That definitely would have been talked about a lot more. We did this with DK Metcalf and AJ Brown, Odell Beckham Jr. and Jarvis Landry, and we have it again this year. So today we're going to be talking about Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson out of Ohio State. We'll talk about their strengths, their weaknesses, and then we'll discuss who should be the first one taken off the board out of the two. There's a lot to get into because this is a two for one special, so let's get right into it. We're going to start talking about Chris Olave and his strengths. Chris Olave at 6'1", 187 pounds, throughout college is one of the best deep ball threats in the entire nation. And so if you go and watch highlight videos, you're going to see play after play like this where he just seems to be scot-free. And how does this happen? Is it a busted coverage? Well, no. The more important question that we have to answer is how does he get so open down the field and how is he one of the best deep ball threats in the nation? Because not only is he one of the best deep ball threats in the nation, but he's one of the best route runners in general, and he is deceptively fast. And what that usually means is you're a smooth strider. There he is in the middle of the field right now, and he's going to be running a seam route, or so the single high safety thinks. But with one quick move, just so fluid and so easy, he's going to run a post, just cross his face, completely have the safety turned around, and he scores on a post on a single high safety, which just doesn't happen. It's the smooth, deep cuts that he's able to commit so easily easily that allows him to get open deep so often. And he also has the ability to play inside and on the outside. Here is on the inside in press man. And this seems like with his small frame, you're going to be able to press him really easily. And that's going to be a huge weakness, but it's really not because he's so good at releasing and it's really hard to get a clean jam on him. He's so smooth. You can really never tell where he's going. He's going to be able to get a clean release, get a ton of separation on him, get at least get a few steps on him. It's going to be an underthrown ball, but he's going to be able to make this amazing catch in the end zone. And he's not going to have these short choppy steps. He's really going to use his long strides and his fluidity to get the corner to open his hips one way. And as soon as he sees this, cuts this back in. So this is how he looks so wide open down the field with all these seemingly easy touchdowns. It's not because of his just his straightaway speed, which he has, but it's his very elusive and very fluid route running down the field. And this is our last example, but a very good one right now. And this is what I absolutely love because every move has a purpose. Not only is he getting the corner turned around, but he's still attacking downfield, which is going to allow him to get downfield fast and let the quarterback get the ball. But he's just messing with the corner, making him turn left, then right, then left. I wish he would have taken this more to the sideline and make it a true fade route to get even more separation, but he's still able to get a step on the corner against Minnesota. Corner has to commit a defensive pass interference. This would have been a touchdown, probably a good penalty, especially because it's 15 yards in college but again just the fluidity and all his cuts makes him so wide open down the field and he's not just a smooth gliding deep ball threat maybe like a Deshaun Jackson but this is reminds me so much more of like a Devontae Smith or a Calvin Ridley because he's a long strider he also is able to have these very creative routes and make these sharp cuts on a dime just watch this route at the top of your screen and this is on the biggest stage too. In the national championship game, he's going to drive up field, do a little out cut, then cut it up field. The safety is going to think he's completely brilliant, so he's going to backpedal and back out. But he gets rid of this ball in no less than three seconds, and he did an out, up, and out. That is just absolutely ridiculous. Let's watch this full speed. It's an out, up, out, just so smooth, so efficient, and it absolutely makes the corner look so dumb. And just being able to deceive cornerbacks of what they think they're seeing and what you're actually doing, doing two different things. So he's going to do an outside fade release here. The corner knows exactly what this is. They're just going to throw it up and it's going to be a jump ball. But on a dime, he's going to break it out to a sharp outcut. This is not what the corner was expecting, but he's able to get one of the easiest touchdowns you can have just with his manipulation of what the cornerback thinks he knows about the routes. And here it is again. I don't know why it looks like this. I guess we have the ghost of the previous play on film, but he's going to do this again in the red zone. Another quick out and up like a little wheel and then straight back out. They hit absolutely torch corners on this route and on the biggest stages as well. 
And not only is he one of the best route runners in this draft class, but he also has some of the best and most reliable hands. And not only this, but he attacks the ball in the air. Whether he needs to go up and snag it and attack it before the DB can get there, or he just has late hands down the sideline. But we're going to see right here how he just goes up and snags the ball, has a huge catch radius. This is where he has his late hands down the sideline. DB really can't get a read of when the ball is going to be coming in. And the range he has, he's a super athletic guy, very smooth, and just that is ridiculous. And don't be fooled by him only being 6'1". He will moss you. He will make super contested catches. And that's why I really don't think his frame is going to be a huge issue. We're going to talk about some of his weaknesses later in the film, but his frame is not one of them when it comes to catching the ball in the air. He has great hands. He's going to go up. He will moss you. And especially on the sideline, keeping his feet in bounds, he has great spatial awareness at the wide receiver position. Tracking the ball in the air down the sidelines, keeping his feet in bounds, just so beautiful. Going right over the top and getting these. Now we're moving on to Garrett Wilson and his strengths. At six foot, 192 pounds, he does have a better frame, and he's not the long striding, very fluid route running technician like Chris Olavi is, but he is very short, quick, bursty, and this is what is huge for him, especially in when you get like jet sweep, screens, bubbles, handoffs, option routes. What he does with the ball after he gets it is what's huge, and that's why I think in the NFL, he's going to be amazing and primarily a slot defender because what he can do after he gets the ball, I mean, just look at a play like this this make one man miss and just incredibly athletic and we're going to get some other things as well but this is really how I see him being utilized like a Miko Hartman like a Debo Samuel he has the frame he has the ability to catch and run after the ball and we're going to see later in some of his weaknesses where he isn't as great as a route runner can be out of control sometimes but once he gets the ball quick he is so good at making people miss that's why he's going to be great wherever he goes probably as a special teams early on in his career as well but just so shifty so elusive and when you get the ball it is just off to the races. And this is what also makes him so good and why he's going to be so amazing in the middle of the field because he is sprinting out to his left right now, full speed, able to completely stop, turn his body, and I don't know what the right word for this, body dexterity, what it is, but it is just incredible. He has great control over body when the ball is in the air. He makes quarterbacks right a lot of the time. That was a terrible throw by CJ Stroud, but Garrett Wilson's able to make him right with how athletic he is being able to go up and get it, making catches along the sideline, coming back to the ball, being spatially aware, keeping his feet in bounds, full extension on it. And plays like this where it just seems like it should be an interception with how poorly this ball was thrown. Right now, Justin Fields is going to load it up. He's going to throw a hitch route back to his left. Instead of being on target, he's running back to the ball right now. He's able to completely stop, come back to it, have great range on it, and that would have been an interception on a lot of other receivers. The corner is just going to be right into their laps, but he's able to contort his body to make this catch. And here he is in a slot. He also can be a deep ball threat, but almost exclusively when safeties are on him because corners tend to give him a lot of trouble, especially when he's not the best route runner, but he is a lot more athletic than safety. So he's able to get the ball down the field and did have a lot of game breaking. And here he is in the red zone right now, lined up man on man with a safety, just gives him a quick out. And this is how I love he wins quickly over the middle of the field. One of the easiest touchdowns you can have. And this is why it's good he's in the slot because he doesn't have the release package that a Chris Olave does so that's why he's not as good on the outside but when he's on the inside and he has off man against the safety he can make it look effortless now let's go over some of Garrett Wilson's weaknesses and so right now we're gonna see so sometimes his feet he can almost be too fast for his own good where he's gonna stumble out of his breaks and just not be as smooth or as good as a route technician as Chris Olave is and this could be a problem because this can throw off the timing of the route or on a play like this where all looks good, he's in press man right now. This is going to make the tie light tape. He's going to take an outside release, come back in, stutter step. But like we said against with Chris Olave, all his moves are so purposeful. And so he's going to beat his man. He's going to get a first down. But what the problem is, is let's count how long it takes for him to get open. So on the snap ball, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi. So if it takes him four seconds to get open on a route like this, that's going to be a problem because this isn't going to be Ohio State. This isn't going to be college you have to win and you have to win fast and where I think Chris Olave has the advantage in this is he's able to get a clean
clean release off the ball and win his matchups on the outside very quickly. Whereas Garrett Wilson is going to win quickly on the inside when he isn't in press man. Just get him the ball in his hands fast, whether it's on a shallow cross, a jet sweep, and let him do his work with the ball in his hands afterwards. And that's where he's going to thrive. And now to talk about Chris Olave's weaknesses, and it is have to do with his frame, but it's not going to be about being pressed at the line because we see guys like Devontae Smith who are very skinny, but with their routes, if you're going to press them, that is risky because they are slippery and they can get past you in a heartbeat. But what it comes to is in the run blocking game, which does not get talked enough with wide receivers because we look at the Titans and AJ Brown, who is a great pass, pass blocking receiver, or Odell Beckham Jr. Chris Olave is not a good run blocker. And it, it does have to do with his fame, maybe a little bit of the want to, but hopefully he can get into the situation and this does help because he does play on the inside or the outside, but hopefully when he's on the outside, they're going to be able to run away from him, but that is a liability because of his frame. Corners are able to block shit him super easily and if he is on to trying to set the edge, it's just something that he cannot do. And so now getting into the comparison section of this, I'm going to say Chris Olave is the Devontae Smith, Calvin Ridley, which I mentioned earlier, just very good at route running, can run all three levels, can play on the inside and can play on the outside and is a true number one receiver on the team. And Garrett Wilson's comparison... I'm actually going to need some more time on that because I don't have a great one right now. Maybe Amico Hartman is some names I've been floated around, but I don't know how much I want to agree with that right away. I am going to make another video on him when he gets drafted with the fit of his team. And I have to throw in there, this is a direct comparison video. I'm not saying one of these guys is better or way worse or they shouldn't be taken in the first round. After going over a lot of receivers, these guys are both absolutely first round talents. So we're really pulling hairs here, but if we do want to make the direct comparison and if it's it's up to me. I am taking Chris Olave if both of these guys are on the board for a few reasons. Of course, it could be a, it depends question on what the team needs if they already have a true number one. But if you're looking for the best receiver out of Ohio State, it's Chris Olave. Just because he's more seasoned, he can run routes at all three levels. And you could make the argument for Garrett Wilson if you already have a number one guy and you really want someone to run the slot and kind of play that Debo Samuel type role where you're just going to get it out to him quickly and run a lot run after the catch. But if you want the best Best, purest receiver out of this draft class or out of Ohio State, it is going to be Chris Olave. But let me know what you guys think. What do you guys think about this comparison? What would you add to their strengths or weaknesses? If you like videos like these, make sure to give it a like and make sure to subscribe if you enjoy daily sports content. The draft cycle is huge right now and obviously I'm looking to get content you guys want out there. So go ahead and make sure to comment down below who you want me to cover next. Thank you guys so much for checking out the channel. I really do appreciate it. And as always, I will see you all tomorrow. Peace.